It's Lake Coutrere, a regular defense and uh, a regular design group. So regular design group is the exclusive silencer design manufacturer for a regular defense. It's a company my friend and I started, um, go back a long ways, but uh, retired recon Marine manufacturing dude, just all around great guy. I called him up and said, Hey, let's make silencers. And he said, cool. Let's do it. Let's start our own company and do it. <laughs> so that's a regular design group in a nutshell. But we've been rapidly moving. We started back in November, um, got our own machine tools, got our own production, and it's allowed us to rapidly test and prototype and create new things. And uh, the culmination of that is this the ID as a Kia 6K. Um, so this is like, I can't even remember, like 52 or 56. So like the 56th iteration from start to finish of where we are is this, the production variant of the ID as a Kia 6K. So the goal we set out for was to make a, uh, a gas gun uh, suppressor duty use. And I really wanted a low back pressure with good visual and audio, audio reduction, right? Audible reduction. So what does that mean? That means we've got ourselves a can that is less than six inches overall length. We, what are we clocked in at final variant is 572. So from the base right here to the very end cap, overall length external is 5.728 inches. When we're seated on our muzzle device, we only add 3.625 inches to the end. Let me see here, muzzle device, this actually recesses in nicely, it only adds 3.625 inches. Laser powder bed fusion, so additively manufactured out of Inconel 718, heat treated, and we're going to offer them in raw, as you see here, which I think is super cool. I like raw, especially as it patinas over time. And then we've got a uh, high temp Cerakote ODG, FDE, and black. Uh, those will be our initial offerings. And this is the can. So the way that we secure this thing, I wasn't happy with any of the the muzzle devices the thread pitches, the tapers, and all that stuff. There's there's always gonna be a better way to do something. So we really thought hard. We were gonna start with uh, something that's already in the marketplace. And we realized that it wasn't the best solution for what we were, we were trying to accomplish. And so we ended up with a left-hand buttress thread with a 15 degree included, so seven and a half degree taper. So 15 overall uh, taper interface, big old taper interface here big old chunky buttress threads. And then we've got a secondary retention system. So we've got an Inconel um, muzzle device and we've got the teeth here and we've got these six locking poles, so, or flexures, but these are our locking poles called the Hugen Bow, which I wanted a secondary retention system and we wanted to do it without having to add any other parts to it. So this is completely monolithic. There's no added springs or pins or anything else to wear or fail out. Uh, fail on this thing. So the uh, taper itself with those threads, with only 15 foot pounds of torque, we're getting 1700 pounds of locking force. And then the uh, the Hesian bow with the, the flexures and the locking poles interface is just a backup. So having that secondary retention system for worst case scenario, really heavy firing schedules is just a lot of comfort added, right? So it's like, I put this thing on there, I thread it down left hand, it only takes two and a half total revolutions. So QD, two and a half total revolutions, 15 pounds of torque, really get this thing on there. And now I've got 1700 pounds of locking force and I've got that good positive secondary retention with these locking poles interfacing with these teeth. Sub degree uh, tension on each one of those. So sub degree adjustments as they go around. So design this guy to be easy on and off, three quarter socket. You can go socket, open end wrench, whatever you want. I like the socket, makes it easy. Torque spec, what is that? We wanted a flat nose because we didn't want anything that can really get caught on anything, like having a protruding 
flash height or anything like that. And we've got a lot of crazy things happening on the inside of the can. You guys will be able to take a look at that. Um, but we've got a arrayed diamond cooling fin slash disruptive internal blast chamber. And then we've got a lot of early gas intake and redirect going on before the first blast baffle internally here. Um, that's going to send those gases into the, the skin of the can. I know a lot of folks are figuring out different ways to do this. We came up with what we, <laughs> through all of our testing, think is one of the best ways to get it done. But we intake a lot of early gas and we put it into the skin of the can. And we're running it through a multiple captured helix system. So a lot of $50 words there, but inside of each one of these intakes, it has a captured helix. So these gases aren't mixing with the other gases that are intake that are getting um, pulled in through those intakes. They're getting sent back and forth, back and forth through the can before they have an internal exit. And then we've also got these secondary vents. So we're bleeding and slowing down those gases before they come out towards the nose of the can. And then we actually have shielded gas ports here. So we're not getting gas directly bleeding out from the nose. It's actually having to hit another baffle internally before it is allowed to exit through these ports. And we've got a built-in uh, three-tine flash hider at the end of this thing right here. Again, you guys will see a close-up. You'll be able to take a look at all of these things uh, with a lot of disruptive features in the, the flash hider itself. So we just tried to feature pack this thing in the smallest amount of space, lightest weight possible with it still being a duty can. Oh yeah, that looks cool with the high knee on it. Burning off some of that oil I just put on the bolt. This is uh, LMT 12.5 spec war, uh, I think mid gas, yeah. Good to go. ID Hezekiah 6K, and this is the uh, LMT 14.5 monolithic upper.